Forum Next 2024, and two years ago, I showed you something in the last day that blew my mind, and thanks to Fabian here at Fraunhofer, I get to do it again. Hey Fabian, we got to reach across Hi. the robot. Good to see <laughs> you again, man. Two years ago, we saw your hot end yeah. being able to lay down wire with a polymer around it, and put it in place, and that was fascinating, like yeah. absolutely fascinating. Fast forward two years to the day today, mm -hmm. and now you're here. Yeah. I know you've got lots <laughs> of development that led up to this point, but now you've got yourself a robotic arm feeding wire through and melting polymer in place to hold it. Yep, that's right. And terminating it. Yeah. What? <laughs> um, you see, two years ago I've showed you a process that we developed for integrating functional material. That's right. Yeah. And we did this with small wires, and we did this with single wires. And this is what you see right there behind us. Yeah, I, I, those are very familiar. <laughs> I recognize yeah. those. And we worked from there on all the way up to this robot system. The whole idea of placing electrical functions onto parts works really well for us. We came up with this, a real industry application in car manufacturing, where we're able to place the whole wire harness set directly onto the part with additive means. That's amazing. <laughs> like when we, talk, when we talk about automotive and the automation behind automotive, the, yeah. the assembly line, right? Being able to put together a car in pieces has, has been one of the major advancements of, I mean, the 20th century. But there's still that manual labor that goes into building the wire harness, yeah, of correct? Course. Uh, robots are currently not able to handle cables easily. Uh, easily. You often have to use large camera system, a lot of processing, image recognition, it's quite complicated. Oh, because the, the robot would need a vision system to know where the wires where are, Where the wire right? is, okay. where, how it's behaved. Therefore, it's really hard to automate processes based on cables. And for the last 40 years, doing work with cables is always a manual setup. So we have humans interacting with them, placing them, fixing them to the car. And we developed here uh, a proof of concept, a very early prototype stage, where we completely automate all this process. The whole, the, well, I've seen the videos online <laughs> of, of people who have created wire harnesses where they have this giant board in front of them and they loop a wire and they run it through and then yeah. they loop wires through, but then that's not even the end of it because they have to take that and then a human is putting that inside the vehicle, correct? Yeah, that's right. And we completely automated this to a two robot system. So we have this robot that lays down the cables, fixates them in place, cutting them to length and strip, uh, stripping the end. And we have a second tool head system that is able to crimp all your needed con uh, connectors directly on the part in one step. This is amazing because we're, we're not just removing humans and replacing them with robots, we're, we're taking away the, the mundane labor and sometimes error prone labor yeah. and automating it and making it more consistent. Great work. With this tool head system, we're placing the cable side by side directly onto the part. This means every cable is be able to be identified. If there's a failure, if one cable breaks, you are able to put your hand on the part and say, this is the cable that is faulty and we can replace this. What really blows my mind, okay, checking is good, <laughs> putting on the part is good, mm -hmm. but the robot itself is fixing the cables on the piece yeah. and then terminating them and then adding the connector. That's right. So fixing the cables to the piece, how is it doing that? Um, we use additive processes here in a minimum way. This uh, means we have those spots that we need yeah, these the right cables here. to be fixated and we're extruding a polymer here. In this case, this is nylon. Oh, because nylon. nylon. Yeah, <laughs> nylon because it's flame retardant. Oh, that's true. Yeah, and therefore oh. easy to use in automotive context. And then the ends, so I, this, this is where the true magic is happening because you're laying down the cables and you're fixing it with the nylon and you've got wire ends. And so that other, mm -hmm. that other end right there, it's going to strip, identify the wires, yeah. strip the wires and terminate the wires. Yeah, uh, the wires, are laid down, but this tool had already stri stripped at the ends. So oh, you they, get, oh, it does strip them at yeah, the end, okay. You get bare copper ends here. Oh, and I kind of see can, one right here. Yeah, that's okay. right, exactly this. And then we can pick up the wires as we know its position, pull them up, put them in a, a crimping tool, completely standard crimping tool, place them in contact housings, and you're done. And you have your full automotive certified contacts right on your cable setup. Well, this is, this is compatible with, I think, current levels of automation in automotive factories because if they have an assembly line and they've got robotic arms doing things, mm -hmm. this is just more robotic arms, yeah. right? You within can the, just place the, this on the line, yeah. parts are running through, getting uh, their cable harnesses um, fully automated 
around the clock. How many, how many cables per harness can this do? Because I see two and I yeah. see four, but I know some cars have really complex systems yeah. that have more cables. Is the plan to eventually add more cables? Uh, yeah, kind of. You always have to see what is suitable for the wire harness setup you want to do. For the harness we did, four was a good number because all strands were, be, uh, were able to be divided by four. <laughs> and therefore, it was an easy approach to, uh, to say, okay, four is a good setup. But this tool head um, works here individual f uh, for every cable. So with four nozzles that can extrude four cables, we also can just do two cables, three cables, one cable. Oh, but you could do two rows of four to get eight, yeah. right? Okay. And all of this would be predefined. So you would get uh, a door panel, for example, yeah. down here, and computer pathing would know how many cable sets are needed. Yeah. It would just work. Yeah. Okay. This was just work. Um, and the way we do this, is the tool head is smart. So you just have the robot path. The robot knows where to lay the cables. This is done in CAD or by hand through teaching and sends the information of how it's moving, where it's moving, what direction, how fast to our tool head system, which calculates every movement needed for all four cables. And That's the, so cool. Yeah. Maybe this is just next level <laughs> stuff, man. <laughs> So we talk about cars and automation, yep. then on the assembly line, is this a process that has to get certified? Or is this being in, developed in conjunction with any, you don't have to mm -hmm. name the manufacturer if you can, <laughs> but yeah, is, this, is this being developed in conjunction with a car manufacturer? Yeah, we, we started with a certain car manufacturer and we had uh, a huge list of um, things we have to fulfill. This has to be used with this cables, with this connectors, with this materials. Um, and we fulfilled all of them. So this setup could be used in current generation cars just off the shelf. The early prototype here lacks um, a lot of um, production power. We are not at the max speed we could drive <laughs> and therefore okay. in this early production state, this is not ready for, for the factory. But I mean, you have, to, you have to get to this step before mm -hmm. you get to the next yeah. step, right? Do you see other applications for this? I know we're talking about automotive manufacturing, yeah. but I mean, we could do house wiring, we could do wires <laughs> in spaceships, we could, we could have robots with wires on the moon or yeah. the Martian surface doing the building of things that humanity needs out there, right? The, the easy application is everything in mobility. So car applications, space applications, uh, aviation applications. And at this scale, you could manufacture everything that features large wire harnesses, for example, houses, but also in smaller scales. We do think a lot about uh, integrating wire harnesses, cable work in smaller consumer market electronic parts. For example, your power tools, your power drill has yeah. a lot of cables inside. It does, I know. Yeah, and all of this is done by hand. And you would be able to automate that? Yeah, <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> The future is now! Fabian, I am so thankful we came by and it, you've really grown leaps and bounds in the two years since we've seen you. So I guess you have until Form Next 2026 to blow our minds again, <laughs> if, if uh, precedence yeah. is set, right? Uh, yeah, the, the research field is currently growing. We are, we are developing in many different directions. Um, you see in all those tool heads, they all have their certain application and this is the, the currently biggest one and the most promising but I'm quite uh, certain in two years, um, I can show you something completely else. This has been amazing, but before we close out, I want you to look in the camera and tell everyone where they can go to find out more about your awesome projects. Yep. You'll find us at Fraunhofer, and especially at Fraunhofer IWU, um, and the website is iwu.fraunhofer.de. We'll put that link down in the description so you can just click away. Well, you know what? Thanks for making this far if you did. You're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for cause you believe in, and automate processes. I like that. All right, <laughs> and as always, High five. Yes. Ah, oh, I've never high fived over a robot before. It's the first time. <laughs>